Ableton On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yehad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity. Able Dinner on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter. Good morning. I'm filming you guys. I'm just filming you guys. Uh, yeah, why don't you, well, let's come inside because it's raining today and uh, This is actually quite an improvement from where it was a year ago, as you changed. Which is Bruce Landry, just Bruce Landry. That's Bruce, yeah. So Bruce, do you, uh, um, uh, you want to? Yeah, so today, what we're going to do today is, uh, if the weather permits, and it looks like it's not going to, I wanted to get the shed roof on and do some work out there. But if it's raining, I've got a plan B to work in the basement well first off right where we're standing right here right. that floor has to get ripped up and in front of the door has to get ripped up because we've got to put some insulation in the floors and we got to put some more insulation in here once all the insulation is in place then we can frame off the floor and put the plywood down so that's going to close that area off we also have to go upstairs and frame this off and get some plywood up on the floor so this this was a staircase that was here last week uh -huh. taken out yeah. once we've got this one installed we had that one taken out so that's going to be our inside project there'll be four or five people in the basement four or five people upstairs and a couple of people cutting framing so i'll try to separate everybody what i will have to know is who knows what end of the hammer to use? <laughs> who is comfortable? Not everybody does. <laughs> I say get a hammer, they get a screwdriver. I say, well, you're pretty close. Oh, keep, we have an SNL Don't keep, keep, keep the screwdriver, you may need it. Um, so I need to know who is comfortable with power equipment if I'm having them doing any cutting. And if I'm having them direct anything with some of the less skilled workers. So we have all levels. We, we don't care who shows up, we, we work with whoever shows up. So I will need to know your comfort level and your ability to work with power equipment or things of that nature. So um, that's the work we're gonna do today. If we're gonna do, uh, safety is gonna be any power equipment, you'll get, I'll go through a quick training on it, even if you know it, so you're familiar with the piece of equipment, whether it's a circular saw, chop saw, table saw, screw gun. Uh, any times you're using any power equipment, here, earring protection, eye protection, we have all that here, we should. Um, so, we'll provide the safety equipment and the training. And then I'll, I'll, I'll be jumping back and forth, losing weight, running up and down the stairs, or running inside and outside. Uh, making sure everybody's safe. If anybody feels unsafe, like working around here, if you have any hazards and feel safe, you just let me know. 
I don't want to put anybody in a position that they feel uncomfortable. So you just have to come and tell me personally. You don't have to make a big announcement about it, and we'll make corrections. If we're working in groups and there are four or five people more or less together, if one person says to me, I will feel more comfortable if everybody wears a mask and we all wear a mask. And I, you just have to come and tell me. I won't make any announcements and point anybody out. We'll just say, everybody put a mask on. And we'll just respect everybody. That's all. We but we'll every... know who went and talked to you. Huh? We'll know who went and talked to you because they left the group. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I may come back. In ten, I'll wait ten minutes. <laughs> okay. A <laughs> couple people would have went to the bathroom right. in that time period, right? But the point is we want to respect everybody's yeah. safety. That's all. Yeah. Um, we're all here for Sean, and we obviously don't want to get anybody hurt in any way, shape, or form. So I want you all back again. Uh, and I always kid about my crew used to say, I used to say, if you get cut, that's okay, because everybody should bleed for the company at least once a day. I always do, but I don't say that with volunteers. <laughs> we want no bleeding. Um, how, how long have you been doing this? How, how, how long has the house been in construction right now? It, that's a hard question. It's been in full-time construction since this spring. Over the winter, two or three of us were working on tearing things apart and bringing stuff to the warehouse and cleaning it out, which wasn't really construction. It was more <clears throat> deconstruction and getting ready for spring. So around April, May, we actually started digging out the foundation and working. So if we can get a go from... April to December, that'll be a record. Um, and that's our goal, to be in by Christmas. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but that's our goal. You mean to have this whole thing constructed by Christmas? We're hoping to have them move in for Christmas. That's, hey guys. that's my goal. Look at North University students here, right? Nice. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got three, any more? We got one, we got two more. Two more. Two more. Oh, wow. Have you been here before? You're here. You look familiar. What branches? Uh, I'm pursuing Air Force, sir. Air Force? I'm also pursuing Air Force. Oh, I'm Army. Alrighty. Pursuing yeah. Navy oh, at the moment. The yeah. Damn, my son was in the Marine Corps. Yeah. <laughs> no one. <laughs> <laughs> About 10 years ago, we were doing a house in the valley, and we brought a bunch of rooks out. And I literally had, like, eight Army, Navy, and about... Four Marines. I said, that's about equal. So we're going to dig trenches. <laughs> we're going to dig trenches and we're going to see who finishes first. Any guesses? Marines, probably. Come on. Ollie, who's the other guy right there? Air Force. Oh, there you go. I was on me too. Yeah, so is he. So anyway, there's an ongoing battle between the Air Force and the Marines. My son will tell you all about it. <laughs> I used that to get a little competition, and boy, did we get a lot of work done that day. Yeah. There was dirt flying. Anyway, uh, does any of your crew comfortable with power tools? You know how to read a tape measure? All right, good. So I'm only here till about 11.30, but... <laughs> oh, you're going to work too? I well, thought that I, was your work. Well, this is That is work. important. This is my work. I'm here till about 11.30. Get my best so side. I will get as much as I can. And edit a lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and please make sure when you guys are using the glue gun that it doesn't saw any, you know, use the right tool. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Okay. Are we all signed in? Everybody's result? all set. Thank you guys very much for, for sticking with us. This Delta variant has thrown a bit of a, us in, into a... You know, we're trying to make sure keep everybody safe. As nobody wants to work in here with uh, masks on for six hours. Uh, so uh, vaccines and everything like that, um, requirements, and keep you all safe. Um, but, yeah, we are all set, Bruce. Okay. We will be doing some framing, some flooring. We'll be doing some insulating. The insulation downstairs is pretty simple. Not a lot of power tools, although there may be a saw or two. Uh, but it's mostly cutting, fitting, gluing, rigid insulation. Um, we will be framing flooring and putting plywood down. We'll be ripping flooring up and upstairs we'll be getting this opening framed off and then the entire upstairs gets a couple layers of plywood 
three quarter inch or one quarter inch, which we got to take out of the truck before it gets too wet, but it's not raining that much. So that's the that's what our goal today is to get this close, get the basement insulated, get this framed, get some plywood down, and get as much of the flooring accomplished up there as possible today. Uh, Does anybody have any questions? Perfect group. You scared them. You scared them all. Scared them all. <laughs> well, and uh, for for the folks coming from the Faith Community Church, um, so Sean Bates is is a member of your your congregation. He's uh, and um, and so that's why uh, Pastor Autry has invited you all to come and join us. Um, and that's a really important piece of our work is that we build community. Um, you know, we we have homeowners, uh, not just renters, and that means that these people are in this community for a long time. And so it's great to have people from his church. Uh, from his workplace to come and support him that builds that community so you all are part of that um, but in addition to that as you know Egan knows from last time when he was here um, our, our work our mission we build affordable housing and that is made possible because we use volunteers if we didn't build volunteers this house would probably use volunteers this house would probably be double what it's actually costing us it's about it's going to cost us about $150,000 to build um, and that's with lots of grants and everything. With labor, it'd be over 300000 and it would be really hard for us to make this affordable. So you guys are actually part of how we make that possible so that we can offer them a really low, affordable mortgage. Again, it's not a giveaway program. We partner with our homeowners. Those mortgage payments get recycled back into our homeownership program so we can build more houses. So you all are making this possible. Uh, so I just can't thank you enough for being here and helping out. And, uh, and we appreciate y'all being patient with us as we uh, figure out how to work 11 people in, indoors where we were planning for being outside. So and thanks, I'm, thanks uh, Bruce. And I'm gonna, I want you to time, I want um, you to time me. Just to let you guys know, just all today that I'm here for, for the next uh, hour or so, two hours, will be part of a public service announcement for Habitat for Humanity, Central Vermont, and a second part we, we, we're going to put this into a second part for Habitat for Humanity. Larry's with Ableton On Air, which is an ORCA program, and he had us on to talk about uh, how we build a home ownership opportunities for mobility challenge individuals, and he's coming here to get some B-roll. We've also offered to do a public service announcement when you're a nonprofit occasionally. Uh, TVs and radio stations uh, advertise your, pro your programming for free. So that's what Larry's doing for us. Thank you, Larry. So, really quickly, this is a one-of-a-kind. So Central Vermont Habitat uh, builds only so far in the last three high performance homes by efficiency Vermont standards. So that means Define high performance of doing right. That. So that means that the walls are really thick, like this one's going to be seven nine inches thick with rigid insulation and rock wool insulation. It also is going to be airtight, which means that the Air change per hour, the volume of air in this house will naturally escape, but only one air change per hour, which is really tight by construction standards. Um, those are very high benchmarks. There's only a couple of habitats doing it. There's only a dozen or so contractors doing it. This entire house will be heated by a heat pump mini split, just an electric Compressor is going to heat the entire house 95% of the time of the year. It's so, not there yet, by the way. He's just motioning yeah. to where it, it will just, be. Yeah. It's just it's a compressor outside, and it's a little electric head up here that blows heat in. Um, it looks pretty simple, but most people cannot do this. So, and nobody in in habitat world in Vermont has ever attempted to take a 1920s house. Converted yeah, this into house is from 1920. 1920. It's a hundred year old house, and we are the first one, the only ones, to try to do a gut rehab up to high performance standards. Most of the habitats are not even building new up to high performance standards. So we have a very high benchmark. So you guys are part of that process of a one of a kind house here. And uh, we hope to build more, rehab more houses like this in Barrie. The only way we can do it, the house has to be donated to us. And we have to have a half a million hours of volunteers, and I have to learn how to go and beg. <laughs> I'm really good at begging. Um, I've learned that if you beg the right way, somebody will install the mini split free. It's called bartering too, right? Mostly begging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have, this house has, um, 
has a balanced ventilation system. The air inside this house will be cleaner than the air outside. Once the system is up, the house is very tight. All the air coming in when the windows are shut in the winter, when it's the worst time, is all filtered air and all your bathrooms and kitchens are exhausted outside. So it's, it's a very healthy house. And we use very low VOC products everywhere because it is so, so house. I even put in a radon sealed sump pump down in the basement. We'll test it for radon after the occupants are in here for a year. And if we have to put in a uh, fan and a uh, radon pump, we can. It will be all installed ahead of time. So just wanted you to know that we're not just building a normal house. We're not just renovating an old house. We are, but we're doing so much more. Um, our houses, when they're done, their heating bills are like one third of what everybody else's are. We did a passive house, which is even tighter than, well, tighter than this house and more insulated. And it got 75% of its sun from uh, heat energy from the sun has about a thousand dollar a year energy bill. So the older the house, the less it costs, correct? As far as like the heat and everything around that. The older the house? Yeah. No, the age has nothing to do with the house. The age has to do with it's a very difficult project. Mm -hmm. Asbestos, lead. All of that stuff. We had, spend, uh, we had to get grant money and spend lots of money just for testing. We had to get the place all cleaned up before any volunteers could come in. So we had to do that first. The hard part is in an old house is like this floor. I've got framing in the way where I want to put eight inches of rigid. I set up, make little boxes of rigid insulation to get in every little cavity. New construction, you just design it. It's really simple. Any idiot could build it, but <laughs> but it takes a real idiot to take this on. <laughs> and you do a wonderful job. Yeah, right. So, so this, is, this is a very difficult job <laughs> because every single day we're problem solving. I'll rip up a floor, there'll be extra framing I didn't know about, and we got to deal with it. So mm. the jobs just take forever. So that's where we are today. We're going to try to close up that rigid insulation that has not been closed up because the staircase was in the way, and I couldn't take the staircase out till I got a manufacturer to make the stairs, and there was a delay, so everything just backs up. So today, we want to, we want to get it all insulated, and the floor is closed up, and if we have time, we're going to get the whole floor upstairs done so next week I've already promised people I'm gonna start building walls I may be working tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> now do you have any questions <clears throat> perfect right. uh, we can get a nice fireman's chain here bucket brigade from the truck all the way up the stairs all that plywood goes upstairs all, right. all, all right. yeah. I know our university students let's uh, let's unload yeah. Um, just make a chain. Uh, I'm gonna bring the rooks upstairs. Get them started. Rooks. Okay. So, make sure you know what a glue gun is. <laughs> yeah. Man. Make sure you know what a drill is. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was joking. That's <laughs> alright. Okay. Uh, so you said you have um, other food stuff? No, I got buns and I got a tablecloth and napkins and plates and okay. a scoop to. That's what I got. Okay. I wonder uh, what we can do to. Oh. Mm. Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. Well, bit, I'm here because basically for my church, That's why I didn't community the church for my very mind, mm -hmm. yeah. big community church. Uh, I've been involved in public service for like over 25, 30 years. Well, what, is your, what is your background? What's your background in construction? Uh, it's not in construction, but I was public service with uh, I was a police officer in Boston for eight, nine years. I worked for the state in Rhode Island. Uh, ten years working corrections, which was part of public service. I was part of a uh, homeless shelter in charge of that for like 50, 10 years in uh, Nashua. So my basically all my life is involved in community service and helping people. Uh, so that's that's the main major reason I'm here today. Also, when I know they need people to help somebody with this house, so I upgrade it for the person who had who's for which is Sean Bates. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I'm here today, mostly to help out most most I can. You just get little bits and pieces. Uh, don't scuff the walls. <laughs> I'm getting bits and pieces. I'm putting it in sections too. So 
Where's the buffet? <laughs> All the rest of the stuff's right here. I brought food. I did. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. By the way, um, that, thank you so much for letting me come Let's today. This oh, we're, we're loving having you here, man. This is actually pretty. Maybe with that. What else did this 1920s house have that you guys are fixing? Or? Well, so it had asbestos in the basement. Yeah. It mm. had lead. All the side of the building is painted with lead paint. Ooh. Uh, so we had a grant from the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board mm. to paint the uh, the building. Uh, so we, they just came this week. There was an 800 square foot two story, basically uninsulated shed in the back. You got that up? Mm. And uh, it was uninsulated and not very stable. No, but I mean like 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 old paneling the wood and. Oh well, there was a coal chute in the basement. That was, was fun. There? Yeah, old really? coal in the still? basement. Still? Dirt floor and no foundation. No foundation. Oh, no foundation. Uh, this was, it no was, uh, corner foundation. No corner foundation. It was a stone wall on top of dirt. And uh, in Barrie, of course, we've got all this granite in this book. Yeah? So in 1920s even, wasn't that when the granite? That was when the granite industry was thriving. So all these houses are built on granite stone foundations. So this has the granite stone foundation, but it was right on top of the dirt. So what we had to do was build interior concrete foundation walls, so interior fo foundation walls, yeah. insulated with a vapor barrier. That's the base of your uh, building envelope. You don't want cool air coming in from the basement. Right. Because then what happens is air, hot air goes out of the top, right? Creates a vacuum, sucks in the cold air. You literally create a vacuum. But yeah, so Larry, there was a two-story building on the back of this that we used, uh, we used uh, heavy machinery to take down. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just tore it down because it was <laughs> No, but no gold mine in the basement. No gold mine in the basement, no. Yep. All right guys, we're we're changing it up just yeah, a little bit heavier now, so maybe a couple guys will miss. Take two people on each one. Yep. Michael Landon always had a great, um, because I'm, I'm in production stuff, he always had a, 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 a great outlook on how to deal with the family in his productions. Oh yeah, he was, he was like a, he was really a father figure. I saw a documentary on, uh, with, um, what's her, uh, Laura Ingalls, what's her name, Melissa Gilbert, with her talking about him. I'm not being very productive. Is there something I can do? Live, and if I can help somebody else to have a place to live and a home ownership, I'll be more than happy to help. And your name is? Susan Landry. And you, what, what position are you? Are you? Do you work? Or I'm you? retired. Huh? I'm retired. Retired. And your job? I don't mind me asking. I was a cook. You were a cook? Yeah. Chef. No, I wasn't a chef. Well, I like to think I was a chef, but <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I'm a food once you get, Once you get a couple of them up. There we go. Yep. Well, I told you that, so it's yep. safe. It's to to them. Yeah, be careful if you yeah. can not to break the two, because we're going to reuse them. Oh, yeah. I'm back at it all. If you guys need to push me up, you know, tell me where I to Tell me where I need to Pull the nails out and I just pull the nails. Yeah, we'll get there. We're the ones from the nails that are taking out, guys. Over here. All those. All these right here. 
Hey guys, and, and try your best to um, not break anything because we're uh, we're gonna try reuse them. We're gonna use them. Yeah. So you're reusing and yeah, repurposing, right? right? That's right. Yeah, we uh, we're bringing in some that's gonna actually sand all the floors and make these look like brand new. Wow. Yeah. Well, this house. When Sean comes in here, so it's gonna be. I'm so I, I have a question. So so we can use this. Um, in terms of repurposing. Uh, in, in terms of repurposing supplies. Now, obviously, you guys get painters and you get supplies that, that's new. But how do you repurpose things? I'm, I'm a little confused there. Well, look, at, you're seeing it right here. Uh, yeah. We're pulling up the old floor pads, taking out the nails. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to, that's currently a hole where the stair was. Stairwell ones, we're going to move them well, the stairs there. So, well, this is the old stairs. These are not good. Good to be old-fashioned, too. I like them. Yeah, they're nice. Hey, these are the places where we open. Oh, I know. I wonder if you, have you guys found anything in the walls? <laughs> oh, like a bag of money? No, I'm serious. We, we did a house one time, and there was a newspaper. There's yeah. a newspaper in the wall. We found. Oh, oh, an old newspaper. We found. Yes. Uh, working on my house. My yeah. house is way older than this one. Uh -huh. We found uh, old shoes in the walls and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was weird. Did you keep them or? Uh, no. <laughs> Thought about it, but my wife throws out everything. Why would somebody? From here up. Yeah. So we're gonna go here. Yeah. All right. Here. 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 Uh, this thing, leaving this. This thing and leaving this piece right here. Too. Right. Okay. So we're going to cut that way. Right, right underneath yeah. here is a bay that we want to put insulation in from the top. Right. Okay. So here, as far as I can go, that way. Right. Just start at this hole right here. Just eyeball it. And pull the first layer up. Right. Cut. Boy, is that loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, I'm gonna make something with them. Save me as many as you, as you can, okay? Oh, I see. One, two cups. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. That's better. See, this stuff I can't no. get. My hands yeah. I'm bad, I'm mad. Bigger than mine. <laughs> I can get my hands out of you doing that. Wow. Okay. Your hands out. Yeah. 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 Laser is side. Okay. Okay, I'm going to double check to see if she fits. Hopefully she won't go there. Yeah. To there. And put a 2x10 in the middle here. Okay. And there. Hey Bruce, are we good to start nailing the boards down upstairs? Yeah, I'll be right up. Um, this board here. Yeah. Yeah. Needs to come out. I turned it very Oh, it needs to be removed? Because I'm going to have two inch rigid insulation go right down. Okay. okay. Very good. So we're going to rip that one out. That one that one can get cut out with a sawzall and just come out. Yeah. 99. And a little more. 99 and a little What is that? I don't think that bit's going to work. No, it's not. What tool uh, is that? Really right. What is that, a saw? This is a sawzall. Yeah. Right now the blade is bent. Yeah. 
This is the part that's really All right, Larry, grab your stuff. Bruce, I'm going to drive Larry home. Hey, Larry, you want to come with us? Ableton On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity. Able Dinner on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h. Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England, Chapter.